बट क्या है ना वेन आई वॉज ग्रोइंग अप माई परस्पेक्टिव वॉज डिफरेंट नाउ वेन आई एम ओल्डर माई परस्पेक्टिव इज डिफरेंट सो ह्योर वी ऑफ मोगली लेजन ऑफ द जंगल एंड ई सर्किस it's so good to have you it's a very very special moment I, okay great that rule of no flash uh, has clearly gone out of the window probably into the jungle and i'm going to give you the mic hello everybody so no flash my photographer friends thank you so much and it's a very special story it's intrinsically an indian story by rudyard kipling but today it's a very special occasion because the world is going to witness there's a premiere in the evening and it's a big netflix premiere of a hollywood release happening for the first time in india what are you expecting i mean i'm i'm just thrilled beyond belief it really is a dream come true that that we are opening this film here you know to bring this film back to its its root source uh, to tell this story uh, you know an interpretation of which i believe has never been seen um in 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 the in the country that inspired it uh is absolutely uh, it's so exciting and and you know this would not have happened were it not for for netflix acquiring this movie and when when we were conceiving the film when i began to direct this film i always imagined it as as having a, a global reach as a story it's a really um in, international story it's a, and i always, and and the tone of this movie is much closer to rudyard kipling's book than than um you know than other versions i mean people's pre preconceptions about jungle book really come from the 1967 animation people a lot of people think that's where it was that, that's where the story came from they have no idea it's connected to india and so so it was very very important to me to make this story um which was cl very closely linked to to indian culture in fact the first person who collaborated with me on the movie was was nitin sawney who 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 is an anglo indian composer a world musician he's absolutely fantastic he wrote the score for mogli um it it was imperative that this was you know in this day and age you can't make a movie uh, with this subject matter and not ground it in it in, in indian culture you know everyone is so excited i'm sure i've i've seen the trailer a couple of times already but the cast that you got is a very eclectic mix of actors and i think you being the captain of the ship nobody better than andy circus to introduce the cast of mogli legend of the jungle so i'm going to go take my seat there okay. andy the stage is all yours okay thank you very much um so we have with us today some of the international cast the the the, the people who played performance captured roles who who inhabited the roles of the animals and and um and also a uh, wonderful young actor playing mogli and we also have some of your wonderful uh indian talent who have joined us in the dubbing of the film for for India so i'm going to excuse if you'll excuse some of the pronunciations which i'm sure i'll get wrong but um i will welcome onto the stage um in this order the fantastic it was such an honor to work with him he is a genius actor a world class act and who i've known for many years and had the great honor of working with before now twice uh, but when he came to this project he absolutely blew us out of the water with his performance of as bagheera if you'd like to welcome on stage the wonderful christian bale no mate Say a quick hello. Are we doing saying hello as individual, or do, or should we just bring everybody on? I think we should bring everyone. Okay, on. and then we'll get into it. Okay. Um, so next up is uh, a phenomenal actress who you will know and love. Um, she obviously came to came into uh, public recognition with Slumdog Millionaire. I worked with her on Planet of the Apes. She is so brilliant in this movie as Mesua um, Mowgli's uh, human mother, uh, the wonderful Frida Pinto. Uh next up is someone who I know a little bit. Uh, his name is uh, Louis Ashbourne Circus. I know him because he's he's my son and he plays the part of a a small little albino wolf uh, in this movie who uh, is is quite sweet. Uh, I would say that. Uh but he's now a grumpy teenager. Here he is, Louis Ashbourne Circus. <laughs> um 
Uh, next up from our international cast, uh, we, f we, from our, sorry, from our local cast, international to, to me, um, is uh, the wonderful actor uh, who you will all know and love, and we are delighted and thrilled to have him on board, Abhishek Bakchan. Um, and then next up, the incredibly talented, uh, wonderful actor who you will, you know, again, know incredibly well, Anil Kapoor Khan. Anil Kapoor. Anil Kapoor. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, next up... Um, someone who I adore and think is the most extraordinary actress. Um, she, she will be, of course, very, very well known to you. The wonderful Madhuri Dekshet Nane. And then finally, we have with us uh, today a young, talented actor who uh, will steal your hearts as the central character of Mowgli. He really is, has done an extraordinary job. Um, he was dedicated through this whole process. This was a very, very long job, and uh, he stuck with it all the way and gave every single ounce of himself. I'd like to introduce to you the very talented Rohan Chand. <laughs> And finally, actually, I have missed someone out because I, I haven't got my reading glasses on. Um, <laughs> I'm very sorry about that. Uh, uh, again, a lovely actor who you will know very, very well, uh, the wonderful Karina Kapoor Khan. I would request uh, this one, I mean, what a cast, ladies and gentlemen, what a cast. Now, hey, 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 you'll all get your opportunity for a photo, thank you. But because uh, Kahani Hindustani hai, to uh, Hindustani Zabani mein hi hum kuch dikhana chahenge aapko, and I'm very excited because Without any further ado, now if you could just now focus on the screens, ladies and gentlemen, here is presenting the Hindi trailer of Mowgli, Legend of the Jungle. If you could just... Everyone wants to see it. <laughs> Again, with all these wonderful people, uh, of course, we're missing out on one person who has a son called Tiger, and now he plays a tiger. Uh, Mr. Zaki Shroff, who's not here. But ladies and gentlemen, I think... We all deserve to see the trailer once again. So, can we please play the trailer once again? It's a, it's a request. If you could dim the lights again. Oh, wow, they're listening to me. Nice. The word wow again and again. I'm going to stand here and performance capture, acting, voices of this absolutely fine cast. Uh, it streams on Netflix on the 7th of December in a language of your choice. This Tamil, Telugu, and English, and of course, Hindi. But uh, I think I want to start with Andy. Andy, I have grown up with this story like a lot of us. I have grown up with this book. I have grown up with watching it on television. What makes Mowgli, Legend of the Jungle, now in 2018, so distinctive from all the adaptations? Um, I think the, one of the most important things about this version that does uh, separate it or differentiate it is, is, is a really... Um, it's really searching for, for the heart of Mowgli. I think in, in many other ad adaptations, it always seems like Mowgli is sort of almost left on the side while the animals do star turns and that, and that it's a, a sort of, uh, he's, he's part of the story but not central. We wanted to make a Mowgli-centric story and it's about his very complex psychological, emotional uh, journey to, of, of self-discovery in a world 
in, 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 you know, caught between two worlds which are changing. And, and that's, that's really at the heart of it. And it is so tonally, it is closer to the book uh, as, a, as a result. It feels, it feels that that book had that. And, and sometimes some of the adaptations haven't really gone as far as they can to really extract that, that visceral sense of what it, what it is to be caught between, you know, to, to, to not have a real sense of belonging. And, and that's what hopefully the, the, the audience, audiences will relate to in, in this modern context. Kristen, my next question would be to you. Uh, a big, big Netflix Hollywood release. The premiere is happening in India. How does it feel? Have you gotten used to everything here in India, which is different? Um, no, <laughs> but um, you know, it's just, just the very, very tip, tip, tip of the iceberg. You know, I filmed here before in 2011 in uh, Rajasthan in Jodhpur, with The Dark Knight Rises. And then uh, I brought my family out here. Uh, we've been here for four days. We traveled through Delhi and uh, Agra and Jaipur and then just arrived here in Mumbai. And a you know, tiny, tiny scratch of this incredible country which uh, has sort of a world within itself. But it's so appropriate for uh, uh, Mowgli to premiere here. All right, and Rohan. Hi. I, I like your hair right now too. <laughs> All right, Rohan. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very, very famous story. Literally every single person in this room and across the world knows the story. People have played Mowgli before. How long did it take for you to get into the character? Like, did you put in a lot of years, you know, probably getting uh, ready for this character of Mowgli, which is iconic? Yeah, so much like all of you, I actually grew up reading Redder Kipling's short stories as well. And, you know, I really loved them and I really loved Mowgli, you know, the boy who grew up with wolves. He was almost like my hero in a way, but uh, I put a lot of work into this through like the physical side of the character. I did a lot of uh, research on YouTube, and I actually went to upstate New York uh, to camp out with wolves in a wolf conservatory center uh, in order to like observe their movements and kind of uh, observe how they interact with each other, and I tried to apply that to Mowgli. Man, I like it. He did his research on YouTube. I would have aced my exams if I had the internet back then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, of course, I have, uh, I have a lot of questions, but I'm sure that you want to ask your questions. So uh, if you could just raise your hand and a mic would reach you from uh, friends here. Yes, there's a question. Yes, you could start from here. Oh, there's a question coming from there. There's already a mic. Hi. Shall I just start? If you could just address. I have the mic, so I'm just yes. going to start. Hi. My question's for Andy, actually. Um, you know, I know Siren just asked you about uh, Jungle Book in the modern context, but my question is actually a variation on that. What would you say is the relevance of the story today, especially with the whole sort of man-animal conflict, conservation, the environment? You know, there's like uh, kind of sharks, uh, jaws, jaws made sharks scary. Is there a possibility that kids might be afraid of tigers after this. I'm just wondering about all these sort of, th and the film does have layering about these things. Yeah, I mean, I think that our version of the film uh, does, it, it, first of all, it, 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 it digs into the notion of what it is to be an outsider. That is perhaps the most important uh, aspect of the film, what it is to, to feel displaced, what it is to not feel that you belong anywhere. And that's why I think it, it, it will resonate. We live in a world that is full of people who are told to find differences in others than rather than accept others and we you know th that that's that that is one of the things that i think is is, is incredibly powerful about about this story um of, of belonging um i think on a on a sort of s a very small kind of political level you can't make a, a version of the jungle book now in 2018 without recognizing when it was written where it was set um, the, the history of the time, and we've tried to bring that to bear in some small way in the film, in the way that the, the, hum, in the human relationship to the jungle, in the terms of colonization, in the terms of, um, in the terms of, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the world of animals having to recede and to be threatened and to somehow survive. Uh, so it is, so there is a, a comment on the fact that, that we are, daily losing great swathes of paradise <laughs> of, in our world. Um, yeah, and, and historically, when Rudyard Kipling was writing this book and what he means, uh, you know, and I, I firmly believe that he is, his DNA is, in, in, is part of this storytelling, this, this boy that was brought up in India, who, whose, whose first language was Hindi, who then was sent away to live in a foreign land, 
um, and was abused as a child. So I think that those, all those aspects really uh, play into a modern retelling, and I don't think you can actually do it by, by doing a whitewashed version of this film. I think you have to connect with the place that it was originally uh, written and, and, uh, and, and based, and I think that's, that's what we've done. A uh, quick question um, for your son. Um, what was it like working with dad and doing what he's made so famous the world over with his performance capture techniques? Yeah, it was great working with him. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's it's cool to see that he's developed this this way of acting, and it's been cool to like try out, you know, the the performance capture suit. But it was it was cool because we'd go into work together, and then we'd come back, and it was just like a normal day. Me getting home from work, him getting home from work. So it was it was it was cool. It was a new experience. Hi, right, there's Hi, a question Rohan. coming from Rudrani. Yes. Hi, Rohan. I thought you were fantastic in the in the trailer. What's very interesting is that um, Mowgli, uh, you know, in different versions, has been always seen as this boy who's been brave, but yet there's this cuteness about him. What we see here is more like a warrior towards the end where you sort of take on the world. Um, did you ever think, if you read books, that you would sort of be portraying this version slightly darker, slightly more fierce um, in your research or whatever you thought you would do it? Well, I mean, for a boy growing up in the jungle, you would kind of have to be kind of fierce, you know, to compete with these animals and everything. But uh, also, I think our movie is kind of closer in tone to Rudyard Kipling's uh, book, which it goes kind of deeper a lot with the characters. And also, like, something that I really, like, uh, admire about Mowgli is really just his, per his perseverance because, you know, obviously he was dealt a very bad hand in life and, uh, I mean, his, his parents were killed in the jungle when he was just a child and stuff like that. He, was just, he, just gets, he just keeps getting obstacles thrown at him over and over and over again, but he still manages to find a way to, um, to, just, to just, like, push through those obstacles, so I think that's really amazing about him. Um, my question also, thank you so much, Rohan. Uh, my question is for Mr. Anil Kapoor. Um, you know, I was having this discussion with Andy earlier about how we've never seen Baloo being so authoritative. You know, he's always been presented more in this comical sort of buffoonery who sort of also has a light, um, you know, laughter in the film. And, but here he's got this a little bit more complex layers. Was that all something that sort of attracted you in, in, you know, when you're voicing it out, when you're portraying? Did it sort of help to do this character in a different twist? First of all, let me be very honest. I was very, you know, it was an honor for me that I was approached to do uh, Balu's character. And of course, when I saw the film and saw portions of it and read about it, I said, uh, uh, it's definitely more textured and more layered. So it made it much more exciting. And of course, it became a bit, I have to be very honest, because there was, uh, you know, whenever I got stuck and uh, that, uh, you know, what, because you see, obviously, we are used to having the director when we were doing the voiceover, so I was, and in, if he was not there physically present, but Andy's voice was there. So whenever I got stuck, I would hear his voice again and again and again and again and understand what is he actually, what is he thinking, how is he doing it? So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So because it became a great reference for me whenever I got stuck. You see, my interpretation was there, but there, were, there are times when you need someone to bounce. So this was a great time. You know, I, I would listen to it six times, seven times, eight times, and understand it, and then go and do it. Uh, do it. So that made it much more exciting for me, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Question from here? Karina ji. Kahan se aaye? Mic hai aapke paas? Hello. Yes, yes. Yeah, I just had a question for Abhishek, if he could answer. You know, we've seen so many versions of uh, the Jungle Book through the years and through the decades, in fact. Uh, what is what do you think is about this story that you know allows so many frequent retellings of it over and over again? What exactly draws people to this story again and again? I think what's wonderful about um, the story that you know Rudyard Kipling had written is that it appeals to every age group through time. Um, when I was a kid you know, in the early 80s, and we watched Disney's Jungle Book, which I was told today released in 67. Um, you know, your favorite character inevitably was 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 Baloo, because he was the fun-loving guy. As a kid, you like that. But then when you grow older, 
um, you know, your choices change. And then as an adult, you prefer a character like Bagheera because he represents certain responsibilities and values which reflect within you. So what's really nice is I think whenever, whichever stage of your life you watch uh, this film or read the story, there's something for each and every age group to take away from. Uh, there are great sense of values, morals, principles, life's um, learnings and teachings that you can imbibe and take away. So I think that's why the story keeps getting retold. Having said that, I think Mowgli is the most um, accurate telling to Kipling's story. I think the rest have been, there, there have been certain liberties that have been taken to make it more possibly child friendly. I think Mr. Circus's version is, is, is most honest and true <laughs> to the original script uh, that Rudyard Kipling had written. Um, having said that, I think you realize that there's a lot more depth in the story uh, okay, there's somebody frantically.